Geology is a relatively new science. The progress and developments made through experimentation are remarkable and have helped in many other fields. Still, there are some things yet to be explained. Out of place artifacts are riddled throughout the archaeological record. They just won't go away, and as science develops, their mystery does too. Take the honeycomb pattern of Paleodictian, which is already well known. We remain stumped as to the creation of such and more questions are being raised For example a fossil of a human handprint was found in limestone estimated to be more than 110 million years old a Fossilized human finger with just as much and the apparent discovery of a human footprint that possibly sported a sandal which dates to more than 300 million years ago these amazing fossilized imprints and remains have left the scientific community scratching their collective heads Not to mention the 65 million year old semi ovioid metallic tubes being dug out of France the unusual block of coal Discovered 124 years ago, which contained a metal cube that couldn't have formed naturally within the lump and many more intriguing things Temporal anomalies are scattered throughout the world things that could not possibly belong to the period in which they were found Evidence exists of human civilization Artifacts and technology out of time that are abundant well researched and well documented This forbidden knowledge is being protected and hidden from all of us until now Today's popular view of modern human presence in the distant past is a false front the truth is out there showing proof of advanced technology and people millions of years before humanity is stated to have evolved on the planet why is the scientific establishment suppressed and ignored these remarkable finds where did they come from how did they get there why are they suppressing this negative proof of modern technology in our past as you study the forbidden knowledge a whole new truth will emerge and become apparent to you The truth that the earth was inhabited by modern humans using advanced technology long before the appearance of the first humans as the history books write today Using accepted scientific methods numerous finds show conclusive proof of modern humans and advanced civilizations present or visiting the earth's past long before this timeline represents as possible the proof is shocking scientific proof of technology long before civilized man evolved on the planet from where or perhaps when were advanced civilizations visiting our past thousands of years before man appeared on the earth as we move further back in time through the different eras you'll see evidence continue to grow evidence showing proof of modern humans and technology in the distant past the Cenozoic era is the last of five major eras of geologic time beginning about 65 million years ago and extending through the present It follows the Cretaceous period of the Mesozoic era and is subdivided into the tertiary period and the quaternary period Features of tertiary times are considered in articles under the names of various shorter time periods epochs making up the tertiary period in order from earliest to latest these are the Paleocene Eocene Oligocene Miocene and Pliocene The accepted scientific view of evolution in the Cenozoic era shows human beings appearing on the earth about 1.6 million years ago and human civilization just 10,000 years ago yet the scientific finds presented here present a very shocking and different story let us look at the Pleistocene epoch finds copper coin from Illinois over 200,000 years old this rendition of a coin like object from a well boring near Lawn Ridge Illinois was found at a depth of about 114 feet below the surface according to the information supplied by the Illinois State Geological Survey the deposits containing the coin are between 200,000 and 400,000 years old Who left this coin hundreds of thousands of years before civilized man evolved? 
modern human skeleton from Tanzania over 800,000 years old in 1913 professor Hans Reck of Berlin University conducted investigations at Olduvai Gorge in Tanzania then German East Africa during his stay at Olduvai Gorge Reck found a modern human skeleton that remains a source of mystery and controversy to this day the modern skull is from a fully human skeleton found that year the human skeletal remains including this complete skull were cemented in the rock and had to be chipped with hammers and chisels it was found in the upper end of a rock bed dated at more than a million years old how did this modern human find his way a million years into the past Willendorf Venus slate over 30,000 years old the Willendorf Venus from Europe dated at 30,000 years old who created or left this artifact nearly 20,000 years before human civilization appeared modern human skull in Buenos Aires over a million years old in 1896 workers excavating a dry dock in Buenos Aires found a modern human skull the pre encenadan stratum in which the Buenos Aires skull was found is at least one to one and a half million years old even at a million years the presence of a fully modern human skull anywhere in the world is highly anomalous why and how did a modern human arrive in Buenos Aires over a million years ahead of its time the Pliocene epoch finds figurines from Nampa Idaho about 2 million years old a small human image skillfully formed in clay was found in 1889 in Nampa Idaho the figurine came from the 300 foot level of a well boring and dated to the Plio Pleistocene age about 2 million years old GF Wright noted the image is about an inch and a half long and remarkable for the perfection with which it represents the human form it was a female figure and had the lifelike liniments in the parts which were finished that would do credit to this classic centers of art upon showing the object to professor fw putnam wrote right he at once directed attention to the character of the incrustations of iron upon the surface as indicative of a relic of considerable antiquity there were patches of anhydrous red oxide of iron in protected places upon it such as could not have been formed upon any fraudulent object humans had not even evolved on this planet two million years ago so who created or left this artifact in earth's distant past it's July of 1889 several men drill for water in what at that time was the very small town of Nampa Reports say they were drilling down about 320 feet when this tiny clay figurine surfaced. It's the crude figure of a woman, only about an inch and a half long, with what appears to be one leg broken off. It's really fragile. It's really small. Uh, there's nothing like that's ever been found that deep anywhere in North America, let alone in Idaho. The thing Modern human skull found in Italy, over three to four million years old. Late in the summer of 1860, Professor Giuseppe Regazzoni, a geologist and teacher at the Technical Institute of Brescia, traveled to the nearby locale of Castanodolo, about 10 kilometers southeast of Brescia, to gather fossil shells in the Pliocene strata exposed in a pit at the base of a low hill, the Calle de Vento. Here he discovered this remarkable and anatomically modern human skull. The stratum from which it was taken is assigned to the Astean stage of the Pliocene. According to modern authorities, the Astean belongs to the Middle Pliocene, which would give the skull an age of three to four million years. Why and how did this modern human visit Italy nearly two million years before human beings walked the planet? Carved shell from the Red Crog, England between two and two and a half million years old in a report delivered to the British Association for the advancement of science in 1881 H Stopes FGS fellow of the Geological Society described a shell the surface of which bore a carving of a crude but unmistakable human face 
the carved shell was found in the stratified deposits of the Red Crag. The Red Crag, part of which is called the Walton Crag, is dated to be of late Pliocene age between two and two and a half million years old. This find would place intelligent beings in England as far as two million and maybe as much as two and a half million years ago. One should keep in mind that in terms of conventional paleoanthropological opinion, one does not encounter such works of art until the time of fully modern Cro-Magnon man in the late Pleocystine about 30,000 years ago. What visitor to Earth's distant past carved and left this shell? The Eocene Epoch Finds Chalk Ball near Lyon, France, 45 to 55 million years old. The April 1862 edition of The Geologist included an English translation of an intriguing report by Maximilian Melville, the vice president of the Société Académique of Lyon, France. This chalk ball was discovered in an early Eocene lignite bed. Based on its stratigraphic position, it's been assigned a date of 45 to 55 million years ago. According to Melville, there was no possibility that the chalk ball was a forgery. It really is penetrated over four-fifths of its height by a black bitumous color that merges towards the top into a yellow circle, which is evidently due to the contact of the lignite in which it had been for so long a time plunged. The upper part, which is in contact with the shell bed, or the contrary, has preserved its natural color, the dull white of the chalk. As to the rock in which it was found, I can affirm that it's perfectly virgin and presents no trace whatever of any ancient exploitation. As extraordinary as it might seem to find those attached to standard evolutionary views, the evidence associated in this find suggests that if humans made the ball, they must have been in France 45 to 55 million years ago. Who made and left this man-made artifact in our past long before human evolution, even before grazing and carnivorous mammals walked the planet? Mortar and Pestle in California, up to 55 million years old. In 1877, Mr. J. H. Neal was superintendent of the Montezuma Tunnel Company and ran the Montezuma Tunnel into the gravel underlying the lava of Table Mountain, Ptolemyne County. At between 1,400 and 1,500 feet from the mouth of the tunnel or of between 200 and 300 feet beyond the edge of the solid lava, Mr. Neal saw several spearheads of some dark rock and nearly one foot in length. On exploring further, he himself found a small mortar three or four inches in diameter and of irregular shape. This was discovered within a foot or two of the spearheads. He then found a large, well-formed pestle and nearby a large and very regular mortar. All of these relics were found the same afternoon and were all within a few feet of one another and close to the bedrock, perhaps within a foot of it. Mr. Neal declares that it's utterly impossible that these relics can have reached the position in which they were found, excepting at the time the gravel was deposited and before the lava cap formed. The position of the artifacts and gravel close to the bedrock at Ptolemyne Table Mountain indicates they were 33 to 55 million years old. Grazing and carnivorous mammals had not even evolved on the planet at this time. So who brought and left behind these artifacts in California nearly 50 million years ago? The Mesozoic Era Proof The Mesozoic Era is one of the major divisions of geological history, following the Paleozoic Era and preceding the Cenozoic Era. The Mesozoic Era, which lasted from approximately 240 million to 65 million years ago, may be characterized as the age of reptiles because their greatest development occurred during this era. The first birds and mammals and the first flowering plants also appeared at this time. The Mesozoic era is divided into three time periods, the Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous. As we move back into time, we enter a period in the Mesozoic era that began with the first dinosaurs appearing on Earth and ended with the development of flowering plants. 
humans wouldn't evolve for at least another 136 million years yet the scientific finds below suggest proof that advanced civilizations were in earth's past and walking at a time when dinosaurs roamed the earth the triassic period shoe sole from nevada dated 213 to 248 million years ago on October 8, 1922, the American Weekly section of the New York Sunday American ran a prominent feature titled Mystery of the Petrified Shoe Sole by Dr. W. H. Balu. Balu wrote, Some time ago, while he was prospecting for fossils in Nevada, John T. Reed, a distinguished mining engineer and geologist, stopped suddenly and looked down in utter bewilderment and amazement at a rock near his feet. For there, a part of the rock itself was what seemed to be a human footprint. Closer inspection shows that it was not the mark of a naked foot, but was apparently a shoe sole which had been turned into stone. The forepart was missing. But there was the outline of at least two-thirds of it, and around this outline ran a well-defined sewn thread which had, it appeared, attached the welt to the sole. Further on was another line of sewing. And in the center where the foot would have rested had the object really been a shoe sole there was an indentation exactly such as there would have been made by the bone of the heel rubbing upon and wearing down the material of which the sole had been made Reed got a hold of a micro photographer and an analytical chemist of the Rockefeller Institute who made photos and analysis of the specimen the analysis removed any doubt of the shoe sole having been subjected to Triassic fossilization. The micro photo magnifications are 20 times larger than the specimen itself, showing the minutest detail of thread twist and warp, proving conclusively that the shoe sole is not a resemblance but is strictly the handiwork of man. Even to the naked eye, the threads can be seen distinctly along with the symmetrical outlines of the shoe sole. Inside this rim and running parallel to it is a line which appears to be regularly perforated as if for stitches The Triassic rock bearing the fossil shoe sole is now recognized as being 213 to 248 million years old an Obviously modern shoe complete with stitching and etched in time in Triassic rock What modern visitor was walking in our distant past more than 210 million years ago? before the age of the dinosaurs Paleozoic era proof The Paleozoic era is a major division of geological time preceded by the pre-cambrian time and followed by the Mesozoic era and including the Cambrian Ordovician Silurian Devonian Carboniferous and Permian periods the Paleozoic era began about 570 million years ago and ended about 240 million years ago as We move back even further in time We enter this period of the Paleozoic era where life was evolving from primitive multicellular free-floating forms in the sea to advanced groups on land the most advanced life forms at the end of this period were amphibians insects fern forests and small reptiles Humans would not evolve for nearly another 300 million years Yet these scientific finds below again suggest even more strongly that modern humans with advanced technology were visiting Earth's past and walking at a time when the first life forms were just beginning to emerge on our planet Carboniferous period gold thread in England between 320 to 360 million years ago on June 22nd 1844 this curious report appeared in the London Times a Few days ago as some workmen were employed in quarrying a rock close to the Tweed about a quarter of a mile below Rutherford Mill a Gold thread was discovered embedded in the stone at a depth of eight feet Dr. A. W. Med of the British Geological Survey wrote in 1865 that this stone is of the early Carboniferous age between 320 and 360 million years old Who dropped this gold thread in the ancient fern forests in a distant time? 
when the most advanced life forms on the planet were amphibians and insects. Gold chain from Morrisville, Illinois, 260 to 320 million years old. On June 11, 1891, the Morrisville Times reported, a curious find was brought to light by Mrs. S. W. Culp last Tuesday morning. As she was breaking a lump of coal preparatory to putting it in the scuttle, she discovered as the lump fell apart, embedded in a circular shape, a small gold chain about 10 inches in length of antique and quaint worksmanship. At first, Mrs. Culp thought the chain had been dropped accidentally in the coal, but as she undertook to lift the chain up, the idea of it having been recently dropped was at once made fallacious, for as the lump of coal broke, it separated almost in the middle, and the circular portion of the chain placed the two ends near to each other. And as the lump separated, the middle of the chain became loosened while each end remained fastened to the coal. The lump of coal from which this chain was taken is supposed to come from the Taylorville or Pana Mines, Southern Illinois, and almost hushes one's breath with mystery when it's thought for how many long ages the earth has been forming strata after strata which hid the golden links from view. The chain was an 8 karat gold and weighed 8 pennyweights. The Illinois State Geological Survey has said the coal in which the gold chain was found is 260 to 320 million years old. This raises the possibility that culturally advanced human beings were present or visiting in North America during that time. How did this gold chain find itself left behind in Earth's distant past more than a quarter of a billion years before humans had evolved? Carved stone near Webster, Iowa, 260 to 320 million years old. The April 2, 1897 edition of the Daily News of Omaha, Nebraska carried an article titled Carved Stone Buried in a Mine, which described an object from a mine near Webster City, Iowa. The article stated, While mining coal today in the Lehigh Coal Mine, at a depth of 130 feet, one of the miners came upon a piece of rock which puzzles him, and he was unable to account for its presence at the bottom of the coal mine. The stone is of a dark gray color and about two feet long, one foot wide and four inches in thickness. Over the surface of the stone, which is very hard, lines are drawn at angles forming perfect diamonds. The center of each diamond is a good face of an old man having a peculiar indentation in the forehead that appears in each of the pictures, all of them being remarkably alike. Of the faces, all but two are looking to the right. Was this stone carved and left behind by an advanced technologist from Earth's past? Iron Cup from Oklahoma Coal Mine, 312 million years old. On November 27, 1948, the following statement was made by Frank J. Kenwood in Sulphur Springs, Arkansas. While I was working in the municipal electric plant in Thomas, Oklahoma in 1912, I came upon a solid chunk of coal which was too large to use. I broke it with a sledgehammer. The iron pot fell from the center, leaving the impression mold of the pot in the piece of coal. Jim Stahl, an employee of the company, witnessed the breaking of the coal and saw the pot fall out. I traced the source of the coal and found that it came from the Wilburton, Oklahoma mines. According to Robert O. Fay of the Oklahoma Geological Survey, the Wilburton mine coal is about 312 million years old. What advanced civilization or visitor was creating or using iron pots in our past more than 300 million years ago? Block wall in an Oklahoma mine, at least 286 million years old. W.W. McCormick of Abilene, Texas reported his grandfather's account of a stone block wall that was found deep within a coal mine. In the year 1928, I, Atlas Elman Mathis, was working in a coal mine number five located two miles north of Heavener, Oklahoma. This was a shaft mine and they told us it was two miles deep. The mine was so deep that they let us down into it on an elevator. They pumped air down to us, it was so deep. 
One evening Mathis was blasting coal loose by explosives in room 24 of this mine The next morning said Mathis there were several concrete blocks laying in the room These blocks were 12 inch cubes and were so smooth and polished on the outside that all six sides could serve as mirrors Yet they were full of gravel because I chipped one of them open with my pick and it was plain concrete inside Mathis added as I started to timber the room up it caved in and I barely escaped When I came back after the cave-in a solid wall of these polished blocks was left exposed About 100 to 150 yards farther down our air core another miner struck the same wall or one very similar the coal in the mine was carboniferous which would mean the wall was at least 286 million years old According to Mathis the mining company officers immediately pulled the men out of the mine and forbade them to speak about what they'd seen Mathis said the Wilburton miners also told of finding a solid block of silver in the shape of a barrel With the prints of the staves on it in an area of coal dating between 280 and 320 million years old What advanced civilization built this wall? Why was the truth as is so many of these cases? Protected and hidden what is the truth about ancient advanced civilizations modern humans and modern technology in our past? Hieroglyphics in Ohio coal mine 260 million years old It's reported that James Parsons and his two sons exhumed a slate wall in a coal mine at Hammondville, Ohio in 1868 it was a large smooth wall Disclosed when a great mass of coal fell away from it and on its surface carved in bold relief were several lines of hieroglyphics Who carved these hieroglyphics more than 250 million years before humans walked the earth? The Devonian period Nail and Devonian sandstone between 360 and 408 million years old in 1844 Sir David Brewster reported that a nail had been discovered firmly embedded in a block of sandstone from the Kingoody Mayan field quarry in North Britain Dr. A. W. Med of the British Geological Survey recently indicated that this sandstone is of lower old red sandstone age Devonian between 360 and 408 million years old in his report to the British Association for the Advancement of Science Brewster stated the particular rock in which the nail was found was nine inches thick and in proceeding to clear the rough rock for dressing the point of the nail was found projecting about an inch and a half quite eaten with rust into the till the rest of the nail lying on the surface of the stone to within an inch of the head which went right down into the body of the stone the fact that the head of the nail was buried in the sandstone block would seem to rule out the possibility the nail had been pounded into the block after it was quarried. This was a time where amphibians and insects were the only dormant life form on our planet. So who dropped this nail to have it eventually preserved in rock at a time more than 350 million years before humans appeared? The Cambrian period shoe print in Utah shale 505 to 590 million years old in 1968 William J Meister a draftsman and amateur trilobite collector reported finding a shoe print in the Wheeler shale near Antelope Spring Utah this shoe like indentation and its cast were revealed when Meister split open a block of shale Clearly visible within the imprint were the remains of trilobites extinct marine arthropods The shale holding the print and the trilobite fossils is from the Cambrian and would thus be 505 to 590 million years old Meister described the ancient shoe like impression in an article that appeared in the creation research society quarterly The heel print was indented in the rock about an eighth of an inch more than the sole the footprint was clearly that of the right foot because the sandal was well worn on the right side of the heel in the characteristic fashion At this time in our planet's history. There was no plant or animal life on the land Even the earliest types of fish swimming in the seas had not yet evolved 
it must have been a very barren landscape that this ancient human in Earth's past saw as he walked the land. How did he arrive so far into our past? The Precambrian Period Metallic vase from Precambrian rock over 600 million years old. The following report, titled A Relic of a Bygone Age, appeared in the magazine Scientific American June 5, 1852. A few days ago, a powerful blast was made in the rock at Meeting House Hill in Dorchester, a few rods south of Reverend Mr. Hall's Meeting House. The blast threw out an immense mass of rock, some of the pieces weighing several tons and scattered fragments in all directions. Among them was picked a metallic vessel in two parts, rent asunder by the explosion. On putting the parts together, it formed a bell-shaped vessel, four and a half inches high, six and a half inches at the base, two and a half inches at the top, and about an eighth of an inch in thickness. The body of this vessel resembles zinc in color or a composition metal in which there is a considerable portion of silver. On the side, there are six figures in a flower or bouquet beautifully inlaid with pure silver, and around the lower part of the vessel, a vine or wreath also inlaid with silver. The chasing, carving, and inlaying are exquisitely done by the art of some cunning workmen. This curious and unknown vessel was blown out of the solid pudding stone 15 feet below the surface. According to a recent U.S. Geological Survey map of the Boston-Dorchester area, the pudding stone, now called the Roxbury Conglomerate, is of pre-Cambrian age, over 600 million years old. By standard accounts, life was just beginning to form on this planet during the pre-Cambrian. But in the Dorchester vessel, we have evidence indicating the presence of artistic metal workers in North America over 600 million years before Leif Erikson. Currently in our planet's history, there was no life on land, plant, or animal. The most advanced life form at this barren time in our planet's history was simple algae floating in the seas. Yet somehow through time this beautiful work of art was brought and left behind and eventually buried and preserved in ancient rock. Did ancient humans leave this behind in hopes of later discovery to help ensure that the truth about their culture would one day be revealed? Grooved Sphere from South Africa, 2.8 billion years old. Over the past several decades, South African miners have found hundreds of metallic spheres, at least one of which has three parallel grooves running around its equator. One of solid bluish metal with white flecks and another which is a hollow ball filled with a white spongy center. Rolf Marx, curator of the museum at Klerksdorp, South Africa, where some of the spheres are housed, said, The spheres are a complete mystery. They look man-made. Yet at the time in Earth's history when they came to rest in this rock, no intelligent life existed. The globes are found in pyrophyllite, which is mined near the town of Otisdal in the western Transvaal. This pyrophyllite is a quite soft secondary mineral with a count of only three on the Mohs scale and was formed by sedimentation about 2.8 billion years ago. On the other hand, the globes are very hard and cannot be scratched even by steel. The sphere with the three parallel grooves around it are too perfect to be anything but man-made. The Precambrian mineral deposit where the globes are found is dated to be at least 2.8 billion years old. Currently, simple microscopic cells were all that was alive on Earth. But this is obviously not true. Who created or left behind these magnificent spheres? Obviously man-made and stronger than steel, what was their purpose for the people who visited and left them behind in time? Various Finds Artifacts from Aen Provence, France In his book, Meteorology, Count Bernin recorded an intriguing discovery that had been made by French workmen in the latter part of the 18th century. During the years 1786, 1787, and 1788, they were occupied near Aen Provence in France in quarrying stone for the rebuilding upon a vast scale of the Palace of Justice. 
the stone was a limestone of deep gray and of that kind which are tender when they come out of the quarry but hardened by exposure to the air the strata were separated from one another by a bed of sand mixed with clay calcareous the first which were wrought presented no appearance of any foreign bodies but after workmen had removed the ten first beds they were astonished when taking away the eleventh to find its interior surface at the depth of 40 or 50 feet covered with shells the stone of this bed having been removed as they were taking away a stratum of argillaceous sand which separated the 11th bed from the 12th they found stumps of columns and fragments of stone half wrought and the stone was exactly like that of the quarry they found moreover coins handles of hammers and other tools or fragments of tools in wood but that which principally commanded their attention was a board about one inch thick and seven or eight feet long it was broken into many pieces of which none were missing and it was possible to join them again one to another and to restore to the board or plate its original form which was that of the boards of the same kind used by the masons and quarrymen it was worn in the same manner rounded and waving upon the edges count Vernon, continuing his description stated the stones which were completely or partly wrought had not at all changed in their nature but the fragments of the board and the instruments and pieces of instruments of wood had been changed into agate which was very fine and agreeably colored here then we have the traces of a work executed by the hand of man placed at a depth of 50 feet and covered with 11 beds of compact limestone everything tended to prove that this work had been executed upon the spot where the traces existed the presence of man had then preceded the formation of this stone letter like shapes in marble Philadelphia in 1830 letter like shapes were discovered within a solid block of marble from quarry 12 miles northwest of Philadelphia the marble block was taken from a depth of 60 to 70 feet this was reported in the American Journal of Science volume 19 1831 page 361 the quarry workers remove layers of gneiss mica slate horn blade talco slate and primitive clay slate before coming to the layer from which the block containing the letter like shapes were cut while they were sawing through the block the workmen happened to notice a rectangular indentation about one and a half inches wide by 0.625 inches high displaying two raised characters several respectable gentlemen from nearby Norristown Pennsylvania were called to the scene and inspected the object it's hard to explain the formation of the characters as products of natural physical processes this suggests the characters were made by intelligent humans in the distant past